Hi, welcome back to Securities Regulations. In this segment, we're going to cover up the remainder part of Introduction to Company Law. In this segment, we will be covering some of the basic terms, some basic, um, some basic principles, um, and some jargon that we will be using in this course, as well as what you would be using as corporate lawyers. We'll be talking about basic terms, basic very rudimentary terms, such as what is a company, what is a share, what is share capital, who are directors, who is a shareholder, what are the memorandum and articles of association of a company. Now, to begin with, the word company has been defined in the Companies Act. And unfortunately, the Companies Act says that a company is any company registered under this Companies Act. Now, that's more or less unhelpful for our purposes. So in other words, we must derive a rudimentary or a basic understanding of what a company is. Now, there are many, many definitions of what constitutes a company and uh, various people have offered their, their solutions. However, one way to look at a company is that a company is a separate legal entity or a body by its own right, which is capable of entering into transactions, as we've, we've mentioned earlier in earlier segments, and it is run by a group of people, typically too numerous to be a partnership. In other words, a company is nothing but a business venture, having certain key characteristics that we've described in previous sessions. So that's what a company is. Now, what is a share? Now, we've talked about shared ownership previously. A share is nothing but a unit of ownership in a particular company. What that means is if we take all the assets and the liabilities and the workmen and the permits and licenses that belong to a company and we sort of put it into one sort of a, a pot, right? And then we say that we are going to break this pot up into imaginary pieces. Each imaginary piece would be known as a share. Again, individual shareholders do not have any direct rights over the assets of the company. What they do have rights over are the shares. And as shareholders, I cannot move into the company and take away property that belongs to the company. Because remember, the company is capable of owning assets in its own right. What I can do with my shares is I can treat them as goods. As we've mentioned earlier, I can transfer the ownership of the company by transferring shares as if they were goods. Now we know that goods are movable property, but are shares as goods, are they tangible or intangible? Well, many would argue that the share certificate is a piece of paper which is indeed tangible. But here's the thing, a share certificate is not the share itself. It's simply a document of title. In other words, when you have a share certificate in your own name, what that means is you can use that piece of paper to prove that you are a shareholder in a company. Now, along with the share certificate, there are two other documents that prove that you are a shareholder in the company. The first is the register of members, which every company must maintain in their registered office. The second is the board resolution that was passed when those shares were being allotted to you or when shares were being transferred to you. Now, you may argue that these things don't, these documents don't happen in the case of a public listed company. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. A share certificate, a register of members and a board resolution applies only to private companies. The moment a company goes public, and it is listed on a stock exchange, all of these shares are dematerialized. What that means is that the share certificates are no longer in physical form, they are in electronic form. This is known as the dematerialization of shares. And instead of the register of members being a physical hardbound book or the board resolution being, being signed physically or stamped by the company, 
instead of all of that, you would simply have electronic records that a transfer of shares or an allotment of shares has taken place. <coughs> Long story short, a share is definitely an intangible property or an intangible good. Now we've talked about the term share capital quite a bit. What is share capital? Now share capital could be subdivided into two primary categories. The first is the authorized share capital. And the second is paid up share capital. Now authorized share capital is the sum total or the aggregate amount of money that a company is allowed to raise. What this means is that when the company is incorporated in the memorandum of association, the promoters of the company will write down what is the authorized share capital of the company. So while shares are expressed in numerical terms, let's say I own 10 shares, share capital is always going to be expressed in currency format, in which case I would say that the, sh the authorized share capital of a company is 10,000 crores, not 10,000. So any share capital is simply the amount of money that the company may raise. Now, the authorized share capital, like I mentioned earlier, is mentioned in the memorandum of association of the company, which means that the authorized share capital can be amended. How? by simply amending the Memorandum of Association. If you're, men, if you're amending the Memorandum of Association through your basic knowledge of company law, you'll know that you will require a special resolution of the shareholders. So by a special resolution of the shareholders, you should be able to amend the or, or, or increase the authorized share capital of the company. So again, just to sum up, the authorized share capital of the company is the maximum amount of money that the company can raise, can possibly raise. Now let's come to paid up share capital. Now, different people use different terms and I'm not going to get into what these terms mean. You know, they're very nuanced differences between allotted, issued and paid up share capital. For our purposes in securities regulation, we'll refer to this as paid up share capital only. So what is paid up share capital? Paid up share capital is the amount of money that the company has already raised. What this means is that over time, the company would have issued fresh shares to various shareholders. Now, the number of these shares multiplied by the face value of these shares is your paid up share capital of the company. So if we look at this diagram here, we'll see that there are 1000 shares having a paid up, having a face value of 10 rupees each. That is the authorized share capital, which is 100 shares multiplied by 10 rupees a share, which is 1000 rupees. Out of these 100 shares, only 40 shares have been issued which means that these 40 shares are actually owned by shareholders. The remainder 60 shares are in limbo. They have not come into existence yet. When the company issues fresh shares, at that point of time, the paid up share capital will increase. So for now, the paid up share capital and the authorized share capital are two very, very distinct things. The authorized share capital is the maximum amount of money that the company may raise through issuance of shares and the paid up share capital is the amount of money that the company has raised through the issuance of shares.